Hi, and welcome to this video, where you will learn how to work with actions for atomic automation. Actions are predefined, reusable, and ready to use building blocks that you insert in workflows. Actions let you construct your automation process and save time. With actions for atomic automation, you automate processes and interact with target systems without having to technically implement them. That means, without coding. You just need to adapt them to your own needs. Actions are delivered in action packs. An action pack typically contains more than one action. Your system administrator can download action packs from the marketplace to the administration perspective. Once the administrator has installed an action pack, you can start using the actions in the pack right away. This video shows you how. Here's my scenario. I need to start an instance on Amazon AWS. Instance means a virtual machine in the cloud. I have to wait until I can connect to it with SSH. Then, I must run a command on the remote machine using SSH. I have to fetch a file with SFTP after the command completes successfully. And finally, I have to stop the instance. I will show you how to accomplish all of this, without writing a single line of code. My administrator has already installed the action packs that I need for it. Amazon for interacting with AWS. Connectivity for checking the connection with SSH. SSH for actually connecting and running the remote command. SFTP to fetch the file from the remote machine. I will use the following action packs, which an administrator installed on my system previously. Since you use actions and workflows, my next step will be to create a workflow where I can insert the actions. For this demo, I'll create only one object, that is, the workflow. The rest is all actions. The first thing the workflow should do, is to start an instance on Amazon AWS. In the Actions tab inside the Objects pane, I navigate to Virtualization. Then, I drag and drop the action into the workflow. Now, I define the parameters, that tell this action which AWS instance to start. I also specify how to connect to my Amazon AWS account. In addition, I also specify an alias name for the task. I repeat this procedure with the other actions. The connectivity check on port 22. The SSH command. The SFTP command. And finally the stop task for the instance. I specified all parameters for the tasks, defined aliases, and connected the tasks in the workflow. Starting the instance might take a minute or two, so the connectivity check might fail due to a timeout during the first run. I defined a post condition with a restart after 2 minutes, so that the task is repeated once, in case it fails during the first try. I'm done defining my demo workflow. Let's execute it to verify that it works as expected. The workflow has successfully executed all its actions, which brings me to the end of my demo about how to use atomic action packs. These are the takeaways. Actions are out of the box building blocks of automation. They let you interact with target systems without having to code. Actions help you save time and keep consistency. The administrator installs action packs in the administration perspective. Usually, the actions can be used right after the installation, there is nothing else to do. You use actions inside your workflows. Simply drag and drop them from the objects pane into your workflow. Then, define the task properties but never change the actions themselves. This is very important for reusability. In this video, I have inserted the actions in the workflow, and I have changed the properties of the inserted tasks. 
I did not edit or modify the actions themselves. This was a demonstration how to use actions for atomic automation. Thanks for watching.